The Angels are making moves again. I shouldn't even say again. They're just making moves, finally. Should the Mariners be worried? Not yet, but we can talk about it. Let's get into it. Angels have signed two pitchers and two pitchers that are going to be in their bullpen and nothing as far as their starting rotation goes, but two very good relievers. One that used to be in the Cy Young running back when he was with Tampa Bay and his ERA has come down significantly in the last two years while playing with a bunch of different teams. And guess what? He is now coming back to the Angels and that'll be Matt Moore. I was a big fan of this guy when he first showed up to Tampa Bay. He was a very impressive starter. His first season, 2011, pitched a two 2.89 ERA. Yeah, I know it was only three games, but he was showing his ability in his rookie season that he could contend. Next three seasons were pretty average, but still very notable. 2012, he pitched a 3.81 with 31 games pitched. Not bad for a second year in the MLB. Uh, 2013 pitched a 3.29, so went significantly down, pitched 27 games. And then in 2014, he only pitched in two games, but pitched a 2.7. I believe that was the year that he got an injury, and then it was kind of a downfall from there. After that, he was pitching 5.43 ERA, 4.08, 5. Five, two, six, seven, nine. It's really not good. Since he got traded around with San Francisco, Texas, Detroit, Philadelphia, LA, back to Tampa Bay, and over to Cleveland, and also Miami, this dude has been tossed around quite a bit ever since about 2016. And now he is back with the Angels, who is not the number one team you want to play for right now because they haven't really made any moves whatsoever and they are not doing well in the AL West. But let's look at last year shall we 2023 he played for three teams he was with the la angels he was with cleveland he was also with miami now with la he was able to pitch 43 three 41 he pitched 41 games and had a 2.66 era which is good that is that is those are the numbers that he was posting at the very beginning of his career he found something he fixed it he liked pitching in la clearly it was a good place for him to be he pitched 44 innings of last year with the angels and he only gave up 33 hits and 14 runs he was able to record 49 strikeouts in those games so pretty much averaged one strikeout 1.2 strikeouts per per inning that he played like this was this is now the Matt Moore that you would expect to see back in 2012 that you would expect to be performing late into his career before he takes off and calls it all done but then he got traded over to Cleveland in a deal where he still continued to, to pitch okay but it just wasn't the best fit for him he pitched a 3.86 in five five games started um, he only pitched 4.2 innings so clearly he wasn't doing the best of the best there now let's keep in mind he's no longer a starting pitcher like he was in tampa clearly it wasn't working out for him as they tried multiple times but being in la he didn't start any of these games but he pitched 40 he pitched those 41 games and was able to have that low era he went over and pitched only five games for the rest of the season with cleveland and a little bit over with miami for four games where he didn't give up a single run and had a 0, 0.00 era for pitching four innings with miami and you're finding a little bit of a niche here he is now a relief pitcher that is where he's going to be dominant and angels are now focusing on that bullpen I don't know why they're focusing on the bullpen right now. Maybe it's just the let's pick up the scraps of what hasn't been signed and actually make some offers or what's going on. We'll get into the payroll in a little bit, but they picked him up and now he is projected to pitch about 60 games. I mean, you're getting, I mean, we're, we can pull information from zips. We can pull it from steam or we can pull it for FGDC. We can do ATC. We can do all these different uh, projections in different places, but the average is between, I mean, the range is from 51 games to about 62 games. So it's just, okay. 60 games on the high end, 56 on the low end. They're all expecting him to, to basically throw nine nine strikeouts per nine innings so a strikeout per inning that's pretty consistent with, with what he was doing last year in every team that he played for but he's also expected to pitch a four around about a 4.0 era which i feel is a bit high being that he's going back to a team 
that he performed his best at least in the last 10 years and that is something that you should take in consideration he obviously liked pitching for the angels and in la it something worked for him and being the fact that he did his best there that means that pitching management knows where to place him and where he's going to be most useful because they have that experience already moving on to the other signing which i think was a little bit louder in the mainstream media because everybody was asking about where this guy was going to end up and i bet you nobody assumed the angels because nobody saw the angels picking up anybody this offseason it's been very dead quiet up until now and that's robert stevenson he signed a three-year deal last tuesday um that's worth about 33 million dollars now he is injury prone so they were smart about this they gave him an injury clause that adds to 2.5 million dollar club option for 2027 if he does sustain an elbow injury tommy john has been insane when it comes to players getting cut off for the next season because of tommy john we're seeing it from shohei we're seeing it from robbie ray endless amount of pitchers right now and clearly the uptick in demand from starters is causing that tendon to just completely sever to where they have to have a reconstruct it this is a big issue um i think i talk studios had a whole vid a video on this you guys should go check it out anywho that clause is only good for 100 if he is going to be benched for 130 consecutive games so hopefully he doesn't get injured because they could really use him you know he is a relief pitcher don't expect him to be throwing as much but that does give them a little bit of depth because their starting rotation is terrible i would not go into the next season with the starting pitching that they have but luckily for them we can get into payroll a little bit the angels typically like to push themselves all the way to that threshold of the luxury tax and that way they can maximize their team and they've been able to put themselves in first or second when it comes to al west they haven't really done anything to show for the last few years but the thing is this year they're still 50 million dollars in salary cap away from the luxury tax threshold so they have 50 million dollars to spend at this point they dropped their shella so that opened up a lot of cap space honestly looking through the the batting order of the angels i wouldn't say anything too negative about their hitting i think they have the bats in order to produce runs but they have to pull through and i think there's a lot of negative atmosphere inside the locker room obviously you've been hearing that on on the news lately but they they have the players to produce as they're all within like the 260 300 batting average range which can get the job done it doesn't exactly make sense why they are second to last in the AL West but I'm going to go with clubhouse issues along with the fact that the ownership doesn't seem to want to spend any money given the fact they have 50 million dollars to spend before they even hit their tax threshold so doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me I would say add maybe one more bat probably an outfielder uh, there's plenty of free agents that are available that probably be a good fit especially if you want to kind of give maybe mike trout a break he is great in the outfield but someone that maybe can swap with him as far as dh and center field goes as of right now they probably should just focus on the starting pitching i would love to see them get another bat like i was saying but starting pitching i mean you have detmers you have canning you have sandoval tyler anderson and silseth do you guys check these guys out i mean er all the eras are pretty much in the high fours um they're they're not dominant when it comes to their rotation their starting rotation a 4.26 4.29 4.09 that's probably their best with patrick sandoval uh but 4.79 and 4.35 those are just not numbers that you're going to want to have your starting pitching at least not 4.26 4.29 from your top three it's just not the route that you want to go for beginning of the next season now Granted, I'm a Mariners fan, and at least within our division, we'll happily take that. If I were the Angels, I would definitely be looking to find somebody who can fill in that slot, whether or not that means going out and spending money on Jordan Montgomery or charging or trying to sign Blake Snell or any of these number of pitchers that are out there even maybe stooping as low as as having trevor bauer come back he is looking to have redemption and this team doesn't exactly have the the willpower to just tell people that they're not good enough to play for their team especially with the drought they've had for so many years and the lack of excitement they've been able to bring their fans no offense to, to angels fans i have one that lives with me it is what it is it's not fun to watch and i feel for you it's almost like you're getting that oakland a's vibe but you 
you still have hope. I would start looking at starting pitchers. You have 50, 50 million to spend before you hit that luxury tax threshold. And that could be three major arms if you really wanted to explore that avenue. And there are players out there that don't, that don't have injury risk at this point and do throw much better ERAs than what you have currently in your rotation. So you have a few weeks left before the pitchers and catchers report to spring training. Angels, I would say get on the ball. You've done well with getting some relievers, but you shouldn't be relying on them to come in after the fourth, fifth, sixth ending to try and hold a game when the first three innings might be a massacre. Just saying. If you guys enjoy the video, go ahead and like it or dislike it, but make sure you leave a comment below. Hit the subscribe button along with the bell. Catch you guys on the next one. See ya.